Welcome to Vision Forward's Tech Connect Live, connecting you to the world of assistive technology. And now, here are your hosts, Corey and Luke. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was, that was a way to do it. That's a very interesting introduction to the show. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, it's... Uh, I think I unmuted. Yeah, you're... Yeah, right. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Hello. Hi, hi, <laughs> hi. It's time. It's time for Tech Talk Live once more. The do, show do, do, do. Where, where we answer the question, what do two people know about technology? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the answer is usually not that much, but... <laughs> not these two people. <laughs> these just two just people. other two people don't. We know everything. <laughs> which is why you tune in every other Thursday to join us on Tech Connect yeah, Live. Hopefully you do anyway. Uh, last week, no, two weeks ago, we had uh, Anat Norman on. We did. It was and, actually a really uh, good session. Yeah, we had a really good time with Anat. Yeah, she told us all about the real Sam Pocket, which was uh, an accessible um, smartphone, which is designed to be used with voice commands only. Ooh. And uh, a quiz question, two yes. things. A, she's mm. coming back mm. uh, in two weeks. Well, that's part why two? I was mentioning it, actually, yeah, because our next uh, two, our uh, show in two weeks is going to be a return of Anat Norman to finish our discussion of... Return the of the Star Jedi. Yes, exactly. Oh, but here's my quiz. Mm. To see if you were paying attention during her oh. uh, session, and yeah. people can put it in the chat, please, okay. too. How many dogs yeah. did Anat have? Annette have? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so I, I, I remember that she only owned dogs, but she did have other animals, which she did. Her. But we, there was a whole thing. Of, we did a whole, <laughs> a bit of a spiel um, on. Okay, it. Uh, she owned. Um, she had um, two dogs. Two. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm oh, gonna. Well. I'm gonna unmute uh, producer Jonathan. Okay. Jonathan, do you recall how many dogs <laughs> our uh, guest had? No, I do not. <laughs> okay, I do. Let's see. We're gonna see if anybody puts it in the in the chat, though. So let me know uh, if you Ka see it. Oh, Carol says one and a half. That is hey. correct. One, here you go. One and a half is correct. So, Thank you. Um, so I guess I was basically right. You. Well, you said one and two, so I guess if we cut the difference, you were, you were right. Uh, if you take what I said and divide by two, then yes. I think you'll find I had the exact correct answer. That is true. Also, apologies to Anat if she's watching. Uh... <laughs> well, more apology to the half dog. I mean, poor dog's a half a dog and you don't even remember Maybe it. That, well, that's why, because it's only half a dog. That's true. <laughs> At least I can remember it half of the time. <laughs> All right, well, uh, hello everyone. I hope everybody is having an excellent uh, day. It is, of course, the depths of winter and we are all freezing our tushies off. So uh, hopefully it's okay to say that word. I don't, sometimes I get confused in America what's coming, what's not. Uh, freezing? You can say freezing, that's okay. Well, it's more the tushies, yeah. but I'm not Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, tushies is okay. Okay, good. So, uh, yes, hope, I hope everyone's keeping warm. In my house, we have a heated blanket. So, um, that's Interesting. Nice. Yeah, we just bought it recently. It's like nice. the whole house is covered in heating blanket, or you're, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're under the heating. It's a new insulation technique. <laughs> um, so yes, we're doing good. Corey, how are things at your house? Are you uh, sitting in your in your hot tub style uh, pool? Yeah, I, I went. I, I did go in it last night, mm. which was nice. It, it's a little chilly getting out of it though. That's the worst. Part. Um, but I did tell you the electric bill. Yes. Has had been uh, was, uh, a bit of a a bit of a. a Kick to the tushy, yeah. uh, to use some of your words. <laughs> that was that. That part was a little rough, but I, it has it has been nice. According to Douglas, I could do with an audio check. Yeah, okay. I was looking. Uh, Am I a little low? Where is your mic? Uh, oh, I forgot to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. my, hello. My microphone is literally on the floor. This is what we're going to do now. And we are restart, replaying the intro music. We're going to start over. I like the way that none of us noticed until Well, that's Doug. why I asked if you because I couldn't really hear it coming through the head spot. Okay. okay. Your sweaters. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Luke. I hope you're doing well today. So, can uh, Doug, if you, uh, now that, uh, now that uh, uh, Luke performed a sound check, yes. i.e. put his microphone on, <laughs> uh, how is he now sounding? I think I sound great. I think you're... We need to hire Doug to still, uh, keep us in line here. Yeah, well, uh, that's what, you know, we appreciate our, our normal uh, viewers. We do. Hello, there. normal viewers. Yeah. You are all excellent people, and yeah. thank you, Doug, for your input there. <laughs> Um, in the chat, well, it's been it's been lighting up in the chat already. Oh, so right. uh, thank you everybody for being enthusiastic. Everyone telling you to put your mic on? <laughs> no, surprisingly no. not. Actually. Got it. Um, thank you for everybody being enthusiastic on this cold Thursday morning. Yeah. Uh, we have jokes. We have jokes galore from Paula. What did the French groundhog see this morning? Paula, I'm so glad that you have a groundhog themed joke because we were trying. We forgot to get a joke and we were trying to get Jonathan to found find uh, one related to groundhogs. So. French. Bulldog. Yeah, what did the French, French, French groundhog. groundhog see this morning? My, fr my, fr 
my first instinct was wee oui, wee, oui, but I, I can't imagine that that really is going to fit here. So I'm not sure I get this joke. I mean, oh. I get the French part, but I'm not sure what if it makes sense. Corey, hopefully you're cleverer than me. Okay. Here we go. He saw his chateau. Oh yeah, that's a, a French chateau instead of shadow. So his oh, shadow, shadow. Shadow. Is that what the, like, I don't even know what the groundhog does. Uh, I have so no idea. Do you, is that is that is that a, a U.S. That is very much. So a US it's uh, every year groundhog. He comes out of his hole. If he yep. sees his shadow and runs yep. back in six more weeks of winter. Okay. If he doesn't see his shadow. Yes. Spring comes early. I don't think anybody on the show knows the results of yesterday's Groundhog Extravaganza. So if anybody would like to put in the chat whether we're in for another six weeks of brutal winter. I mean, it's a very scientific system. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, they don't rely on the Groundhog. We rely on the comments. Yes, we do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Pass it down the line. That's what I say. Uh, Carol. Um, well, Carol said one and a half, and we already knew that. We yes. already had that read that aloud. So yeah. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Uh, from Jim. How do you evade someone who is trying to steal your barbecue? Grill. <laughs> I don't know how you understand this one either. You're Maybe a, I'm just really uh, stupid today. I don't know how to explain this. Sorry, hit me the answer is kebab and weave. Oh, kebab? Bob yeah. and weave. Like, a, like Bob and weave. Bob and weave. Okay, but, but we say kebab. Yeah. Do you say kebab? We say kebab. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we say kebab. It, okay. It's a stronger bob. Okay. Chicken, we say yeah, kebab. chicken kebabs. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Corey's favorite dish. I like chicken uh, kebabs. This is what uh, we give Jim. Oh, very good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, today we are going to learn if Corey is a good screen reader man. Uh, okay. How, you, how, how are you feeling so about this? So I am feeling very confident. Uh, I don't like. I, I'm not a big toot your own horn kind of guy. Okay, but you're about to. I feel but like. But <laughs> I love to play the saxophone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I do, uh, the reason we did this is I do feel that I am a pretty confident web uh, browser with a screen reader. And really, for, for most of our clients, if not all of the clients we work with, mm. browsing the internet is probably the hardest skill to learn. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Turns out web pages are kind of complicated. Yeah, you know, there's so much, there's, uh, is it, you know, how is it laid out? Is it, how accessible is it? Yes. Can I not get this done because it's not accessible or can I not get it done because I'm not sure how to do it? Great question. Um, all those kind of things all come into using the internet. And so the, I think we, what we wanted to do today is throw tasks at me. And these are on, honestly tasks, I have no idea what's coming. I don't know what, I, you know, I've never, I've not prepared mm -hmm. at all. And my plan is to sort of verbalize and tell you what's going through my head as I'm completing the task. I don't want to hear, you know, I just want to hear about the screen reader stuff, all right? I don't need to know everything that's going through your head. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> just... well, I wouldn't do that to you anyways, because... <laughs> I'm sure there's some strange, strange things going through that. <laughs> yeah, that's very basis. true. That is very true. Uh, before we get into it, uh, Jonathan, did you find a Groundhog Day for our loving audience? Well, Groundhog Day joke. joke. I yeah. said uh, the word joke there. <laughs> so, not a specifically Groundhog Day, but I found okay. a Bill Murray joke. Oh, that's what I, I actually love if, the movie Groundhog Day. Yeah, if, yeah. if anyone hasn't seen that movie yet, mm. Check it out. It's a really it's a good, good one. one. Yep. It's a good one. Um, but uh, the joke that I came across, um, he's talking about all of these jobs that he had had, and, the, you know, they're very tough. Some of them are in the summer, some of them are in the winter, and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, tough conditions and all that. Fair but point. he says, those were all fair. Those were all not that bad. Toughest he ever had was uh, selling doors door to door. <laughs> Very tough. If you think about it, I guess the, uh, you're knocking on the thing that right. you are trying to get them to buy. So I like it. It's a good the argument. Do you Excellent. have a door? Well, yeah, I guess you do. <laughs> Shoot. All right. Uh, so as Corey said, this is Corey's challenge. If anybody would like to put anything in the chat about how well or otherwise Corey is performing, then feel well, free. Well, also maybe throw some, t if you have a task. Throw, throw a task. I mean, we have you. You have some prepared, have some tasks, right? Yes. But if yes. if someone has one mm. that they would like see, uh, please, if it's even please possible, please pay to my do. bills. Yeah, How about that for a task? Yeah. No problem. Just give me your login information to your banking app. <laughs> we'll go check it out. <laughs> Indeed. Um, if anybody wants to uh, vent about their hatred of uh, using the internet with a screen reader, feel free to do so in the chat. Or maybe you love navigating the internet with a screen reader. You can put that in the chat as well. I actually had a lady um, recently, a client, who, yeah. was, uh, who could see the internet fine, okay. uh, but wanted to use a screen reader. <laughs> you know, each to their own. Oh, that's interesting. I agree. It was very interesting. Yeah. So each to their own. That's okay. what I say. Uh, Corey, are you ready for your first challenge? I am. You, could you unmute uh, the computer? I can, but you ha I'm going to need to do something first here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to get us ready for the first challenge. Okay. 
Well, I didn't really want my desktop shown. <laughs> Oh, oh, I know. Oh, I, is, the, is the first challenge open up? <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, I know. Uh, my you apologies. Said, but no, don't the, worry first, about. the first challenge for Corey today, <laughs> the most essential and basic challenge of all, is can Corey open an internet browser? Oh, that's I a good know. one. Let's find out. Hopefully, we're going to hear the computer. Search here. box edit. Oh, there you go. Very nice. Google Chrome. G. Yeah, Enter. there we go. Okay, but Corey, Corey yeah. you did not explain a. your process. Control plus oh, yeah. About. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. I thought, I thought this was kind of a joke <laughs> one. All right, so uh, obviously there are a number of different browsers you can use. Google Chrome, Edge, Firefox, all three work just fine with a screen reader. I prefer to use Chrome. Uh, again, a couple different ways you could open it. If you have a des uh, desktop shortcut, you can open it from there. I chose to just use the start menu. Mm -hmm. Tap the Windows key, hit G for Google Chrome in the search box. It filled it in mm -hmm. for me, hit enter, and now we are sitting in Chrome. And just as a heads up for, for people who might not be super familiar with Chrome, or by default, Chrome opens to the new tab and search dialog, which is basically your address bar. Being, uh, being Google uh, Chrome, you can either type in a full URL, so if you know the actual address of the website you're going, like vision-forward.org, you can type that in, or you can actually just do a Google search right from that address bar, which we'll probably do later on. If not, I'll, I'll show it. Um, and that's where we're at right now. We're at kind of the new tab. It's waiting for us to... It's basically, I mean, go, when you come to the internet, there's two things you might want to do. Mm -hmm. Number one, go to a website. Correct. Number two, do a search. Yeah, You're that's in really the right place to do both of those things. Sometimes you search to go to a website because you don't know. Yep. Um, but it, it does allow you, you know, back in the day, it used to be homepage. You mm -hmm. know, you set your homepage. And you can still do that with Chrome. Yeah. Uh, but by default, but it's frankly, who cares? Exactly. Exactly at this point. Who cares about homepages? All right, um, Corey, I will just point out here. So Corey said, hit the start button. You'll be in the search box. Type in G, G, type in G. G, and you'll find Google Chrome. That's not necessarily the case, though. Corey finds Google Chrome because he goes to Google Chrome all the time. But yeah. if you type G, there might be a different app it finds. Don't keep on pressing G, whatever you do. You need to type out the name of the thing yes. if you're using the search yeah. box. If, you, if you're on your desktop, if you do a Windows uh, M or a Windows D to your desktop, yeah. then you're going to hit G, continue until to hit G it. until you find Google Chrome. Yeah. But when you're using that search box in the Start menu, exactly, you want to actually type out uh, the entire program. I, I might just be a really bad teacher, but I, my clients always seem to have issues with understanding those two no, different I, things. No, uh, we have the same thing too. Hey, yeah, 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 it, right. it happens. Maybe we just both really is, bad teachers. Because <laughs> it is two different. I mean, it's it's the same. The goal is opening a program, yeah. and you're doing it in two different ways. That yes. you need to do it in two different, you know, I can see why methods. So it is, can be confusing. Yes. All right, so we have Google Chrome All right, open. Let me crack my knuckles. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, challenge number one is yes. complete. So challenge number two. <laughs> yes. Here we go. I need to open up my notes here. Ooh. Uh, hmm. And okay. as Luke, as you're looking it up, I will yeah. do my very best not to, uh, Luke and I won't talk over Jaws. I know that can be a tough sometimes yes. uh, when we do these. So we'll make sure that we let Jaws speak out or stop it before we speak. All right, so I think we'll start off with this very fundamental task. I, I've try, tried to choose tasks that I think people often want to do when they come to the yeah, internet. Sure. Um, so hopefully these will be relevant to people's uh, everyday use. And okay. The first task is just looking up a piece of information. Okay, so I'm going to ask a quick question, and Luke, I want sure. your answer, and I <laughs> and I also would like the the feedback from uh, the the people connected. Yeah. When I do a Google search, which is basically what we're doing, yeah. when the search results come up, should mm. I show you how I do it, or should we go through a? Should I mention a couple different ways that it can be done? Because there's, you know, that's mm, that this is one. Is, this is all about. So I'm going to say you. Because okay. this is about you being a good screen reader man and your experiences. Okay. But if people can just bear in mind that there are always multiple uh, ways to do things. Perfect. And I will uh, say that there are things I do that are just ingrained in habit mm -hmm. that are actually bad. Yeah. And one of them is a Google search, and you're gonna. So I'm gonna mention. I'm going to show you the way I do it, but yeah. I'm going to mention the right way of doing it. So you're it. going to say, yeah, this is how I do it, but don't <laughs> yes, do it like this. Exactly, because everyone gets in bad habits, uh, and even though you know it's not the right way, it's hard to do. So I hope you teach your clients the correct way to do it. I do. Me. I always do as I say, not as I do. Okay. I treat them like my children. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so what am I looking up? What do you want? Uh, yeah. So um, we're going to look up a video game release date, and the reason for this will become okay. apparent later. But uh, I have heard about this video game, okay. which is called Fall. Spoken. For spoken? F O R spoken? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I was almost tempted to have you look that up as well, but uh, yes, uh, for spoken, F O R 
Olmenwood, S-P-O-K-E-N. Got it, okay. okay. So I've heard about this video game and I've decided that I might be interested in picking it up, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's released yet. Okay. That's the problem. So that's what I'd like to find out. Got it. So I'm in my, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm in the address bar. It's ready for me to do a Google search. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, if you weren't in this and you were on Google.com, you could just be typing the same thing into the edit field on Google.com to perform well, a search. Well, if you're using so, a different web browser, you should still be in the search and address bar. Yeah, most of the time you can do Almost yeah. all of them have this capability now. Yeah. So because you're looking for a release date, rather than just doing Forspoken, I'm going to do Forspoken release date because I really kind of want to drill down to the exact information I'm looking for. I hate to stop you already, but let's just talk about that a second. Um, one essential thing, whenever you're searching the internet, if you want to find the search results in the most convenient and effective way possible, you've really got to be specific with your searches. It really is, and you, but you almost don't want to get too specific. It's that fine, walking that fine line of what is, it, because when you're a screen reader user, your goal as a screen reader user is to hit as least amount of keys as possible. True. But you're go then you might say, well, why don't I just type for spoken? Well, because then we're going to spend more time finding release date instead of all, it's going to probably be tons of game Anything, any news related to exactly. spoken, whatever. Yeah. So you really want to think about what is that search <laughs> Specifically, going to be. what are you looking for? Yeah. So I'm going to do for spoken. For spoken. Um, yeah, re release. East day. Ooh, Real is actually filling it in for mm -hmm. me. Right? So nice. release date, here we go. Date. Hit enter. enter. Forspoken release date, Google search, Google Chrome alert. This site can act. Okay, so it has performed a Google. Stop talking. It has performed a Google search for me. I'm on Google search page oh, wait, here. I just realized that nobody can see your computer yet. <laughs> oh, you didn't search it <laughs> I'm over. Sorry, I'm That's sorry. okay, they can hear it. There we go, everybody. <laughs> all right, so we're on Google search results page uh, here with all of our search results. One quick thing that I get in the habit of doing, and I also train individuals to get in the habit, anytime I load a new page, I always get in the habit of doing a control home to go up to control the top help. of the page. Forspoken release date, Google search. The reason I do that is now I know exactly where I am in the page. JAWS tends to try to be helpful, and a lot of times it's not helpful, and it puts you somewhere on the page where you might not know exactly where it is, mm -hmm. or it starts reading the page automatically, starts moving you down. I always like to get in the habit of just doing a control home. Now I'm at the top of the page. Nothing's above me. Everything is below me. Now, the way I would get to my search results is I know that all Google search results are headings. So I'm going to use the JAWS, uh, and again, this is screen reader agnostic, but I'm going to use the H key to move by heading. Now, this is where I don't do it most efficiently. I just tap my H key a bunch of times until I hear the word web results, mm -hmm. and then I know that the next one is going to be my actual search result. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to show you the, the better and faster way of doing it. So I just go... Excessive search mode, search reforspoken slash initial release date heading level two. Okay, Ooh. good. So there you go. I hear what this is a release date. So it doesn't tell us on here. What I would do first now is uh, I'm going to down arrow to get a little bit more information about this Google search because potentially I might actually get the info right here without actually having to go to a page. Heading level January 3rd, 24, 2023. There you go. Hey. So I didn't actually even have to go into the page to, to, to get to the information. So it's always a good idea when you do your headings and you land on your search first search result, if it's a task like this where we are looking for one specific piece of information, do your down arrow to look at uh, more information about that search result because it'll save you from going into a page potentially. So there's a cool thing that happens with uh, Google searches. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if this happens with Bing and stuff, but uh, with Google searches, if you search for a specific bit of information, if it can, it will display that information yeah. at the top of the search results without you having to go to a web page with, or with, like Yeah, that. it's almost like it's, it's almost treating it like a, a Alexa or Google Home where yeah, it's just giving you the answer. Yeah, so that's very handy for us. Now, user. one thing you might notice here, let's just take a step back really fast here. Now, that's the way I do it. Now, let me show you a little quicker way and potentially the, the better way. I'm going to jump back up to the top. For spoken release date, Google search. And now we're going to move by heading again. I'll do it a little slower. Accessibility links heading level one. All right, there was our first one. It said heading level one. Search modes heading level one. Another heading level one of search modes. Search results heading level one. There we got another one. So that's three H's so far, all heading level one. Ones. Or spoken slash initial release date heading level two. And here we we got to this heading level two. Now four one four three four nine. That's gonna <laughs> come in. There you go. One of the things that you can do though is date. that Google will, or I'm sorry, uh, screen readers will allow you to move not only by headings by doing H, but you can also use the number key, so the number row above your keyboard. 
um, is you can hit the number of the heading you want and jump only by those. When you say so, number of heading, we're not talking about the numerical order. Correct. Yes. Not, not, not the third, fourth, fifth, sixth right, one. Right, right. But you heard each heading was a, the first three on this page were all heading level one. Mm -hmm. And then that one that we wanted was a heading level two. Mm. So now if I try this again, I've gone back up to the top of the page. If I hit a number two. Search results heading level one. Four spoken slash initial release date heading level two. Now you might think, you might ask a question, well why did it, I heard it say the heading level one, mm. why did it do that? It purposely does that. The way that headings are supposed to work if they're used correctly is that it's a hierarchy. There's one, heading level one, and then under that is heading level two, which is like a subset or a subcategory of one. Heading level three is underneath that. So one of the, the examples I sometimes give is heading level one is recipes. Heading level two is desserts, which is a type of a recipe. Three, heading level three is chocolate, uh, is cookies, mm. which is a type of dessert, which mm. is a type of recipe. Mm -hmm. So you can see they're kind of in this hierarchical, hierarchy, yep. hierarchy, <laughs> <That's all. laughs> uh, um, and so when I used my number two key, it also read the heading level one that corresponded to that heading level two mm -hmm. so that now I knew heading level one was search results and then I moved to heading level two which was this release date. So it does that on purpose. So question. Yes. Let's say that the information was not displayed at the top of the Google search uh -huh. here. What would our first heading level two be? Typically, uh, so normally heading level two will be that that I mentioned before, uh, that search. web results web and results search. Yeah. Okay. And then our normal search results, which are probably still on this page, are usually always heading level three. Ah, so if I go back up to the top of the page and I do three instead. Mm -hmm. Search results heading level one, four spoken slash initial release date heading level two, January 24th. 2023 heading level three. So this time you heard it give the heading level one and the heading level, level two, two. Mm -hmm. and then read the heading level three, which was which was the, the answer. So, yes. so yeah, so typically when you do a Google search, if you would like to use the number method instead of just tap, tap, tapping your H, mm -hmm. you're gonna use your three key is what's gonna be your designated, uh, typically your designated search results. So that would take you to the first result, which is a heading and also a link to a website. Correct. Which will give you the answer. And then you would hit, then you would typically hit enter on that to yep, then to actually go, to, go to that specific page. Whew, okay, well, you did a great job there. Yeah, thank so, you. I don't know if we should be marking you uh, here for each of your tasks. You want to score? You score I'm going to score okay. you. Yeah, Jonathan, okay. if you want to keep score here. And uh, we can only really give a 10 out of 10 there because you found the results. Almost got to give me a 9, though, because I do it wrong. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you just marked yourself down. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, wait uh, a minute. I was never good in school. <laughs> there you go. I Jonathan. Just have two, uh, Tasks from the audience that they would oh, recommend. Oh, oh okay, coming well, off on YouTube. Okay, let's yes. um, let's mark down the nine out of ten, and then let's get one of these tasks from the audience. Okay, yes, yes. fair enough. Um, so Hapreet wants a uh, oh. pretty basic uh, checking email. Ah, good. We're good. We're doing that next. Okay, perfect. Uh -oh. And then uh, Spencer yes, is uh, asking somewhat cheekily uh, for you to log into your bank account and <laughs> your credit card details. Yeah. That's a pretty scary one. So <laughs> well, I mean, I would be feel free to give you access to it because there ain't much you're gonna get out of it. So. <laughs> See, the, tr the trouble is, is that is something that you would want to know how. To do. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. But unfortunately, yeah. I'm it's... not that open. Yes. I'm a pretty open book. But... Uh, Corey, I just so one of the tasks that I wanted to do here was what Harper had actually said. Yeah. It was uh, okay. the next task was going to be to go to Gmail. Now I'm thinking we should be signed in with the Vision Forward I account. I think we are. So I we're think we good. should we're be good. okay. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like you to do this, Corey. Okay. Not by returning to the address bar and going to the URL, which I'm sure you know, but instead oh. by uh, opening a new tab and going to the URL. Oh, we want to do some tab browsing. We, okay. We, so we, should we explain what that is really fast? Let's go for it. Okay. So for people who don't know, in uh, any web browser, you can do tab browsing, and basically what that allows us to do is open up numerous websites. Uh, in their own separate tabs, which means uh, typically the way that the, the uh, internet works is that when you open up a web page, you're viewing it. When you go to open up a second one, the first one is replaced with the second one. And so as, and as you keep going, they just keep getting replacing themselves. 
But when we do tab browsing, we're opening it up in its own tab, which now allows us to jump between the two. So let's say, for example, you were looking up flights and you had Expedia and Priceline open. You could have them open in their, each of their own tabs and jump between the two tabs so that you could compare mm -hmm. without going looking at Priceline and then going to, to, to uh, Expedia and then having to go back to Priceline and go through the whole process. Yep. So that's tab. So shortcut Sweet. to create a new tab is mm -hmm. Control T. Nice. Control T about blank address and search bar. Added. And it's a. Drop, dropped us right back in our address bar mm -hmm. again. And now I know since we're going to Gmail, mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to actually, instead of doing a search, I'm mm -hmm. just going to go in gmail.com. Com. Enter Gmail, Google Chrome for slow connections. All Gmail, right. For slow you connections. know something weird. Main region. Inbox 272 I vision 4 Dean Foss. I didn't space. know that you could just do gmail.com. I always do mail.google.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do G uh, Gmail. My mind has been blown. Yeah. All right, uh, so we've opened Gmail. Now, there's okay. two things that we would, well, there's more than two, but the two things that we're going to cover, the, mo the primary things that you would want to do when you come to your uh, email is yeah. number one, read emails. Yep. Number two, send emails. So I would like you to show us how to navigate and read emails. <laughs> Which is it's so funny because I don't use Gmail. I know. That's I use enough. Gmail, but I don't use the online version of you Gmail. Use, I use Outlook for everything. You use Outlook, But yeah, that's fine. So. I, 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 we are going to, I mean, I've done it plenty of times. So. so we're going to figure out. Yeah, right. then, uh, so first of all, let's navigate to an email and read okay. it. So first and foremost, we loaded up a new page. Let's do our control home. Inbox 272 vision for our Dean Fawes at Gmail. All right. So here we are. We are on our home page here. Now, I know that Gmail, all of my messages mm -hmm. uh, are uh, checkboxes. Mm -hmm. Basically, what that allows you to do is perform specific actions on those messages. Uh, uh, mark them as read, send them to the trash, whatever it might be. But I use that as my navigation to jump from message to message to message so I can quickly find and kind of breeze through my, uh, my inbox. Nice. So uh, in any screen reader, X is your checkbox. So if we hit X, we're going to go to our first message. And read, YouTube creators, shorts of revenue sharing starts today, February 1st. Have you signed your new terms checkbox not checked? So we got a couple things here. We see who it's from. We heard it was unread. We also got the subject, and I think it even gives, uh, I don't think it gave us a little, in this, in here, I don't think it gave us a little preview. No. But we at least got enough. So again, if I hit X. Google account, vision forward. Take the next step on your Windows device by. That takes me to the next one. X again. Unread. Google, security alert, January 31st, a new sign. Now, just so everyone knows, when you're navigating by element like this, uh, the letter always takes you down the page. If you add the shift key to the letter, we can move in reverse. So if I wanted to go back and read that first email, I can just do a shift X. Google account, vision forward, unread, YouTube creators. And there I did a second one, and now I'm back to this message here. So now I'm on, on the message I know I sort of want to read. I'm going to just down arrow here and get a little bit more information. I'm also going to find that the subject of this message will uh, should be a link, mm -hmm. which will allow us to then to go in and actually read the full message. Not start button. So here I have a not starred. YouTube creators. Link shorts of revenue sharing starts today. There we go. So there's our subject line, and we heard it was a link, so we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Enter. Shorts of revenue sharing starts today. Have you signed your new it terms? Link. Main read. I'm going to tap my control key to have them be quiet. And now we've brought up the actual uh, screen here with the full message. Inbox button. And if I use my H key for heading, I should find that message. Uh, and I, it'll, it should be uh, probably most likely either the subject line or something that, uh, from YouTube Studio. It's something that I'll know that I got to the message. YouTube creators, no reply at YouTube.com. There we go. So I can start to down arrow through here, and I'll get a number of things. Wednesday, February 1st, 6.41 p.m., 16 hours sent. ago. Yep. Not start checkbox, not check not reply button. It. More button menu collapsed menu. Oh, to Infocus 2963. Yep. Now, typically, if, if I was doing it, I wouldn't even be stopping to do this. So no. let me just do this. Uh, I'm going to come back to my heading. YouTube created. And this is how I would do it. Wednesday nuts reply more button. To Infocus show D reply. Hi, the charts. We've charts. High vision forwards. Tech connect. So hey, I yeah. was down arrowing and went past. I heard it say high vision, and I was mm. just going a little too bit too much fast. Yep. So then I came back and, and did it. So um, th that's more how I navigate. I'm just going quickly yeah, through but that's, things. I and mean, it's the same principle. It's mm -hmm. just that you are used to listening to things and knowing if they're relevant or not yep. because you've been using a screen reader for such a long time. Yeah, so. and also uh, what I know I'm listening for mm -hmm. is I'm not, I know I'm not going to hear link 
or button or yes. something first. Yes. I'm yes. waiting for just plain text. text. Yeah. And I heard that when it finally, when it said high vision forward. And again, it's a, that old when you're hitting the remote too many times and you go past what you want, you got to come back, yeah, <laughs> yeah, reverse yeah, back. Yeah. So then not. I just reversed and came back uh, there to find what I want. So how do we read the, uh, this email from here? So a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I'll tell you the way I do it yeah. and then I'll tell you the right way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> the way I do it, just because I'm so used to doing it, is I just down arrow and read line by line. Yep. Charts of revenue sharing starts today. We've expanded our ad revenue sharing model. So but the real way, the better way to do it is probably going to be your read all command. If you're using, you know, JAWS or MVDA, do your say all or your read command. So you're just giving one command and just having it read to and you. And that command, Corey, is? Well, for, for JAWS here, JAWS, it's yep. going to be my, I'm in laptop mode, Ooh. so it's caps lock down arrow. Uh, otherwise, it would be insert down arrow would also work, depending on which one your, what your JAWS key is. Excellent. Now, we did uh, find some buttons uh, that were above this email. Mm -hmm. So as Corey had found that first heading, which was the, um, the email address of the sender, uh, as he was down arrowing from there to get to the email <coughs> body, he yeah. came across some buttons like a reply button and a forward button, maybe that type mm -hmm. of stuff. So we could, of course, use those to reply uh, or you know do something with this email. I'm not going to have you do that, Corey, because I want you to compose a new email. Uh, Can, but before you do that, though, yeah. sorry, sorry. No, quick, I was going to do one too here. here okay. Go for it. Uh, I was just going to say, let's say that we wanted to find a specific word or phrase <laughs> here and uh, select it and copy it. Well, OK, so there's. Uh, what would you have? The, do you have the phrase? Yes. Okay. We've expanded. Okay. Yeah. So I think we were going to do almost the exact same thing. Oh, good. I was going to delete it. Okay. But it's using the same. So what I would do if I know exactly what I'm looking for. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to delete this, I know there's a delete button. Or you mentioned the specific was what was it? We. I wanted to find we've expanded. We've. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then what I would do in both cases is I'm going to use the virtual find in JAWS as a JAWS user. I don't really, you know, I don't care. I don't know where it is on the page, but I know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do a Control F. Let's find dialogue. Find one. I'm going to type in what we're looking for. Weave. Now, I'm going to say you wanted weave, weave expanded. Yes. I'm not going to bother with expanded because most likely the word weave mm. is pretty, it's not very common. It's probably not used on this page a super a lot. I know that we've never used it. Exactly. Nice. So I'm not going to bother coming, uh, typing the whole thing out because Sometimes when you do the JAWS find, you want to be real careful on uh, how much you put in. Mm. Because is it is and this is actually a good example. Is it weave or is it we have? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you want to be, kind of be careful how much you put in there. Because if you put too much and you're too specific, then you're not going to find it. So I've just done weave because I'm also lazy. And let's see if we can land on it. Weave. Enter. Screen find result dialog. Search string not found. No, didn't okay, find no, it. Escape. Escape. <laughs> That's weird. Did I spell it? Just find dialog. W E apostrophe mm -hmm. V E, right? Uh, oh, there's. Yeah, that should be like that. Think, Weave. Yes. Enter. Screen find result dialog. Yeah. Search string Probably not draw. found. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, but this is good though. So for some reason, well, the could... JAWS find hasn't isn't able to find it. So let's now try we have to try and find instead. it. You said expanded. expanded. So let's do let's do a JAWS find for expanded instead. Expanded. Enter. We've expanded our hey, there you go. Yeah. Now, so, so there it landed on it. I have a quick question. I wanted to, yeah, go ahead. It didn't find weave. I wanted to see how it was spelled. R expanded weave blank W E apostrophe V E space. Oh, that's weird. I know, but so JAWS the JAWS virtual find should not be uh, case sensitive, right? Not case sensitive. No. I mean, let me try it, but it's Hi, it's not. But I've find never had that issue. Weave. Weave. Enter. Screen find result no. dialog. So Search weird. string it, not escape. escape. I wonder if it's. Just find. We. Enter. We've expanded our. If I do we, do I wonder if it's the apostrophe. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. I've never tried. Google, I don't know that I've ever done. Google have designed their own apostrophes. Yeah, it's really weird. Special. I've not seen that before. So, but let's try. Let me show the virtual find one more time. So okay. let's say I'm going to delete this message. Uh, actually, do we? I think we might need this message, though, don't we? Uh, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> let me go. So let me go back to our inbox. Well, this is. A, we, let's do this. Yeah. I'm going to go back to our inbox. Now I know there's a link on this page for inbox. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is. Okay. So I'm just going to do a Control F. Mm -hmm. Let's find dialog. Type in inbox. 
inbox, enter, wrapping to top, visit its same page link inbox one. And there I just landed on the inbox, enter. so we'll hit enter, of revenue sharing and there we go. So the virtual find, when you know a, a word or a words you're looking for, virtual find, I use it all the time. It's super fast to get to, to where now you want to be. Say, you might say, I've never used uh, Gmail before. How would I know that it would say inbox? Well. If you know anything about emails, mm -hmm. you know, then you should know that there, there are folders and one of those folders is the inbox. So just part of this is knowing something about, yeah. you know, website design or just, you know, just yeah. about computers in and, general. And one thing I didn't mention and I, and I probably should have, you know, this, this is, I have been on Gmail so I knew there was an inbox. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times if it's in an, a completely unfamiliar site, I will need to just go to the top and down arrow mm. uh, from the top and just read and kind of move through the uh, move through that website and get a feel for it. Yes. But once you do it once, then you have a, an idea and you can start to then utilize some of these these faster tips. That. Yep, definitely. Um, so let's create a new email. Uh, so for okay. You. So I know that the word uh, typically for a new email, we could do one of two things. I'm going to mm. use our virtual find. Okay. I'm going to do it wrong and then I'm going to do it right. Okay. So, um, let's say uh, you told me to create a new email. Yes, okay, so I'm going to do a control Plus F dialogue. and I'm going to type Find new. New, enter, YouTube creators, shorts of revenue sharing no, starts today. The link, have you signed your new terms? Now, if you um, do a virtual find yep. and the first result isn't what you want, you can hit F3 mm -hmm. to continue moving down the page by that search term. Unread, Google, unread. Google. So I'm just Security doing new. Link a new sign in on link a new sign in unread. Okay. YouTube I'm going to give up. So obviously a new message. It's probably a link isn't new message. Hmm. So the other term that's used a lot in email is compose. So now I'll do a virtual Plus find and do compose. Compose. Enter. Wrapping to top. Compose button. There's our compose Ooh. button. So sometimes that's what'll happen, right? You'll 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 try to search for something and then you don't end up finding. So then stop and go. Okay. Well, what is other terminology? If it's not new message or new email. Uh, Compose, that's something else that's used. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Enter. Or possibly Navigation create. region. Yep. Search field mm. button. Compose. New message. Search field list box horizontal. Now, I just did this with a client the other day and it was very weird. Mm. And I got to remember how the heck I even taught him to do it because awesome. it was. Um, well, actually, I think. Okay. So here we go. We're on a, a new message here. Heading level two, compose. I'm going to go up to the top of the page here. And I know uh, with emails, mm -hmm. and most people should know, mm -hmm. that when you're composing, you're entering in uh, certain information, a yes. to field, a subject field, and a body or message field. Now, those are usually things you type in, or, or I mean, they have to be, or you're typing in this information. And because we're typing it in, that means it's an edit box, which means we can move by E. Uh, to jump around our edit box. So I'm going to hit the E key until I land on the what I'm hoping is a two field. Now I do, re, if I recall, Gmail I think changed it recently and I don't know oh. that there is a two field anymore, <laughs> but we're going to find I'll out. Find so out. I'm going to hit E. Subject edit. Ooh, that's a subject. So that tells me immediately that something is amiss mm -mm. because the two field always comes before the subject, mm. always. So what does that mean? Well, that, that means something goofy is going on here. And this is what I kind of remember from before. So now we got to troubleshoot, though. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is from here, I know the two fields should have been before the subject. So I'm going to up arrow to start looking above where I am to find out where or what that two field, what's going on. Why, why isn't it? Is it not a, an edit box? Is it something else? So let's find out. So we're going to go up. Subject. Link add BCC recipients control shift B. Okay, so there's a link to add BCC or blind carbon copy. I don't want that. Link add CC recipients control That's shift another C. link if I wanted to add CC or carbon copy. So still we're getting closer because that's telling me that I'm on the right path because that is all still adding uh, people to the email. Mm -hmm. List box horizontal. Oh, list box. Okay, let's oh. hold on. What's that mean? Let me go up again. Search field. Search field. Link to select contacts. Uh, link to select contacts. Okay. Save and close graphic. And now I get to a save and close. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that tells me here I'm in the right area, but Gmail is no longer kind of just doing a plain old to field. But instead, what it looks like to me is I'm going to come down. Link to select contacts. I could link, I could click here to see my contacts. I'm going to keep coming down. Search field. And I have a search field. List box search field. But it just says search field. It's not an actual edit box. List box horizontal. But here we have this list box here. So this must be what they're using as their two fields. So I'm going to go into it. Enter. Search field extended select list box. 
And I'm going to now see if I can type in somebody's email address instead. So now it might, may or may not work. So Why let's not? try. So L S C R I V E N. Scriven at. Okay. Vision. Forward. For fork. All right. Now I'm going to pop out of this uh, um, form field here. Virtual PC. Link at CC recipe list box horizontal. No. Hmm. Search field. Link to select contacts. Not Search that. list box hard link at CC recent link at BCC recent so link at list box horizontal. Okay. So now I'm got a little bit of a quandary here. <laughs> but actually I know how to fix it. Hey. But uh, this is how I figured it out last time. So what I ended up doing was going to the subject field. So I'm gonna hit E again. Subject edit. And I'm gonna hit enter to go in. Enter. Because I need to hit edit. turn forms mode on. And now I'm gonna shift tab. Clever. Two. Search field extended nah. to and now box. suddenly and it says collapsed. two, and it and now and now now I believe it will work if I type your name here. Let's see. L L S L S C R list box. I V E N. Vision. Dash. Dash forward. Dot org. Scriven a vision forward. So list box. Scriven a vision forward. Dot org. Scriven a vision. It's super weird that that two field it almost didn't allow you to go to it first. Now there's probably some other workarounds I might've been able to do, instead of hitting enter on it, I might've been able to do an alt down arrow to open it, because it was kind of a combo box. I wonder if said. when it said search box, you could have pressed enter there. Even though it wasn't, yeah, but it, to I, me I, it was just plain old text, but you never know you never that know. sometimes with the internet. Mm -hmm. But just shows you sometimes these weird workarounds. So a lot of times with forms, when they don't act the way you expect them to, sometimes I go to a form field that I know is is working correctly. The subject field said, you know, when I hit E, it landed on the subject. It, mm -hmm. it, that worked correctly. And then shift tab to move backwards, and then we got to where we needed to be. Now, so, I'm not going to make you do the rest of the email because we're short on time here. So um, I would now just tab through here, though. Yes, tab through and then fill out the information. Yep, exactly. Okay. So um, we only have 15 minutes left. That's how, yeah. Oh, should we grab? Oh, wait, and we did grab one from the from Jonathan, I couldn't, the, the reading email. Was yes, uh, okay. so what we're gonna do here, so shopping. Yes. People like to shop. People do like to shop. Where, and, where, where? and earlier we found out that. Oh, that game. Forspoken oh. is now available. Oh, it's so, like foreshadowing. Yeah. Hey, For, or foreshadowing, <laughs> <laughs> if it's French. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so Corey, yes. your final challenge for today okay. is to go to a website and purchase. Now, I know that you um, that you have been to uh, Amazon uh, plenty of times. Yes. Don't know that and you're my familiar. House has been Amazon. Yeah, exactly. it. <laughs> uh, don't know that you're familiar with GameStop at all. F familiar, never been on the website. Okay. Well, this is going to be your challenge. So let's go to GameStop. I will tell you the URL. You'll never guess what it is. I don't even, I don't even, oh, no, we're going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not doing it that you way. You want to do it? I do it the way I do it. Okay, fair point. So you if I way. know that you want a specific game and you want a specific website, okay. I'm going to jump up to the address bar with an Alt-D. Yeah. Alt address. I'm going to type for spoken. For spoken. Really? Game stop. GameStop. All right. Enter. Because now my Google search should take me right to game. Uh, I should find the GameStop page directly for that um for that uh, game. So I'm gonna hit number three. It still hasn't loaded. Oh, come on, buddy. Hello. Did you go sleepy? PC. Hello? Escape. Inbox 271 vision Let's forward. Dean follows it. Say Address and free. Forspoken <laughs> Forspoken <laughs> game. Space. Stop. Stop. Enter. Leave right. button. Leave. Enter. Oh, Inbox oh I had a leave button. I did not. Ah. Ah. Okay. Alert. This site can access your location. All right, Forspoken. so we're gonna do number three to move to our search heading. And number three. Ads heading level one. Forspoken game stop registered official site heading level three link. All right. Now, this is interesting. Yeah. That's most likely going to take us there, although it's not. It's actually kind of like a sponsored one. Yes. And, and I'll be honest, I never use those. Okay. I always keep going to I the actual one. I want you to do it how you want to do it, Corey. So. All right. So Search results heading H. level four spoke PS5, PlayStation 5, GameStop heading level Which three. Which one are you? Xbox? PS5 is perfect. Okay, good. I don't own one, but we'll just okay. get it anyway. <laughs> so we'll hit enter here. GameStop. Now it's going to go. Level three link for spoken PS5, so I'm guessing you want to know how much it is. GameStop. That would be fantastic. Right. Well, it doesn't matter because you're going to buy it for me. So. Nice. <laughs> so I'm at the top of the page here. So I'm going to do an H, and I'm hoping what I'm listening for is for the name of the game, for spoken, because that's going to tell me that I'm skipping over all the junk why, at the top. Why do you think H will? Because if, if websites are done correctly, headings should be used. And because this, uh, I came to the specific product page of Forspoken for play, uh, PlayStation, 
Uh, if I hit H, I should jump over all that repetitive junk at the top of the website, probably categories and blah, blah, blah. Search box. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to hit H. Menu heading level two. Okay, keep hitting H. Features heading level two. H. Product description heading level two. Ah, so that tells me that they used headings, but they didn't. They didn't have a heading of the actual game title. Didn't seem like it. Because no. most likely, if you're hearing product description, that would come after the name of the game. Yes. So that tells me I stop right away and go, okay, now I know that there isn't a specific heading for the uh, there, title. but I know I've at least jumped to where I want to be. Okay. So what I would do now is kind of back up because most of the time prices are sort of listed before the description, mm -hmm. but you never know that. Features heading level two. So here's features, but I'm going to go even above features. Menu heading level two. And I'm going to come back up to this menu. And at this point now, what I would probably do is I'm not going to start to down arrow. I'm actually going to do a virtual find mm -hmm. for the for and I'm just doing F O R S P. Okay. A bit of full spoken. Yep. Enter. Four spoken cuff G W P U S. There we go. Now I know I've gotten to the place on this page where four spoken is probably going to be. Now I'm going to start to down arrow. Large view of product image for graphic. Ooh, the large view. It doesn't matter oh, how big view. it is, but. 151. <laughs> All right. Four spoken March full trailer. Large view trailer. of product image yep. five graphic. Got 308. Few pictures here. Yeah. Four That'll spoken like story one full agnostic ESRBRP. So we got large view of product image six graphic, large view of product image seven graphic. Yeah, you can hear it saying graphic. So I large view of 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 large of large view 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 of so what I'm going to do is a virtual Offer find dialogue. for the dollar Offer sign. Percent. Uh -huh, clever. Percent. clever. Dollar. Enter. Dollar 69.99. Hey! There you go. Now, but from uh, experience, yes. is that the price of this game? Or sometimes on product pages, they'll say related products. Oh, interesting. And is that what I'm looking at? Mm -hmm. So now what I would do is up arrow just to get a little bit more context of what this 69.99 sure, is sure. to. Link collapsed ratings. So there's ratings. 16. 2.7. Link collapsed 2.7 out of 5 I stars. Very good no, it does not at all. <laughs> but that tells me that it's, uh, more, you know, that it's related to what this game is, what the cost was. Can you just come up a little bit further for me, Corey? Yeah. Link Square Enix. And again? Heading level 1 for Spoken PlayStation 5. There's a ah, heading. there it is. So, okay, so That's let me is. go back up to the top out of curiosity. And let's go by H again. Menu heading level two. There's a menu. Features heading level two. It, well, that's so weird. It just skips past it. But let's. Product description heading it level just two. Skips hold past on, it. hold on. Bonus heading level two. Pre order force specifications. General heading level. Gameplay heading level. Fandom heading level. Four spoken PlayStation. That, 5 yeah. Yeah. Level Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, however, this is laid out, the visually, I'm guessing what's happening is visually you see it in the correct order up yes, at the top. That's correct. But whatever, however, the tab, not the tab order, but however these headings were designed, mm. it's coming way past everything else. So that must be uh, yeah. some weird thing That's of GameStop. That's not very good design. No, um, no, not at all. Uh, that, the name of the title should be the first Should be heading. the first heading. Yeah. Oh, it may, it may, maybe not always the first heading. Sometimes there's headings up in the top. Yeah, it should be close Repetitive, up there, but exactly. Right. But, but as you see in here, I, I, he, what I did here was a combination of a number of different things. I love the virtual find, but I like to use little tricks like the dollar sign to go find the price really quick yeah, that's a and nice you know, trick. that I kind like of that. stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Corey, you're yes. going to buy this for me now. Okay. How do we go about uh, getting this in the cart? So uh, we could do a couple different things. What I would do here is I would either do a virtual find for cart to see if I can land on the add cart button. Sure, sure. Or usually it's a cart, uh, a button. Okay. So I would do B for button. So we'll just try B for button real quick. Verify address button. No. Add to cart button. There it is. Hey. There's our add to cart. Out of stock it. Oh. Pick up tomorrow. No. Out of stock. Okay. Oh, add to cart ESRB. So I'm going to add it to our cart. Enter. Main region. Add to cart button. Forspoken PS5, PlayStation 5, GameStop, right. Google Chrome. Added to cart, nice. Good. Your Forspoken Thanks. PlayStation 5 product that. replacement. <laughs> okay, so I've added it. Now, uh, because I uh, shop so much online, yeah. usually after you add something to the cart, the next thing is uh, I always do a virtual find. If I'm done shopping, Okay. I do a virtual find for the word check, for checkout. Let's Because that's it. usually the next Let's step. Almost, not always. Check. Enter. Added to cart. Nice. Your Forspoken PlayStation 5 has okay. been added to cart. Thank Product you. replacement plan. But I'm going to try another one. F3. Oh, what happened Escape. My... Added to cart. Nine. Not, not found. Oh, not found. Okay, why did it find? Just find dialogue. I know there's a word. Check. Check. Enter. Added to cart. Nice. Your F3. Oh, that's weird. 
behaving very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Next mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Dollar twenty nine point nine nine original price. Next button. No, I don't want to add some other things. Next button. Next button. So there's a next button here. Okay, well, I got to figure out what this is real quick. I'm gonna go up to the top of the page. Table with two columns and heading level two and added to cart. Down. There it is. Says added to cart. cart. Good. Nice. Your force unlabeled one Thank button. Thank you. It was on weird unlabeled. unlabeled. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Product replacement plan. I don't want Link that. Link more. No. Nope. Add one year plan if anything I happens sure to your item. We add two year plan if anything nope. view cart. There's a view cart. So in this case, what it did, what mm. I figured out, is it didn't actually show me the cart. What it did is it's trying to sell me a protection plan. Yes, it is. Can I just say something mm -hmm. here as well? Visually, this button that you're currently on says view cart and checkout, but apparently oh. the metadata or whatever, it just says view cart. So the, the, the graphic there or whatever they must be yep. using has checkout, but the actual yep. text label so they put it. So search for it with JAWS, it, it didn't see it, yeah. yeah. So we'll hit enter on view cart. Here we go. And now it's going to bring it up. Card game stop. Two frames. And stop. now I would probably, what I would do again is Just another word for check. Okay. Check. Enter. Linky Terrace game stop link check. No, that's not what I want. Check in order. No. Deliver no. today. Check availability radio button not check oh, two of three. Okay, so now Go. I'm seeing that it's asking me how I want to get it, but I'm going to keep going. Check availability but link proceed to checkout. Yeah, here we go. Now we got to proceed to Enter. check out. Card game stop. Link proceed to checkout. And I don't have stop. an account. Try later button. Okay, checkout but let's button. just yeah. say, <laughs> let's yeah. just say here, Corey, because mm -hmm. oftentimes at this point of the checkout procedure, yep. if you, um, you know, are not already logged in, yep. then you'll need to log into your account. Let's yep. just assume that you did have an account. How would we find where we put in our email and password? So if, if it's somewhere you know you've kind of shopped before, you know you have an account with, uh, again, as I said before, usernames and password is an edit box. You gotta type in stuff. So I would use my E key Email edit required. to find where that login, you know, what that was. Now, here's one thing though, mm -hmm. uh, that I'm gonna leave a quick tip. If you're doing that because you're looking for the login box, mm -hmm. don't, it, what I just heard right now is email uh, edit box. Mm -hmm. And your first instinct might be like, perfect, I found it. Right. But I've been on enough sites where I've been burned where that is actually an email to sign up for a uh, newsletter. No. So you want to make sure that what I would do is I want to make sure that there's a password field password. underneath. I just did down arrow and heard password. Yep. Now I know for sure this is the login, not the sign up for our newsletter. That makes sense. So I've been burned yes. a couple of times <laughs> where I'll put it in and then I'm like, why isn't there a password? What's going on? And then you re realize it's not. This is uh, why Koi's inbox is full of junk. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Svetlana says you can probably use the new Y navigation to skip through visual things. Oh, that's right. I think that was in. Let me try it. Check out we do. Show password button. So that landed right on the show password button. Wrapping to top. Show oh, that's all. There aren't no really yeah. any, visual, there aren't any visual things on this page, really. There's no graphics sure. or anything. Stop. Email edit required. Yeah. Email heading level so two. Email required that? password. Required pa show password button. Keep me signed. Yeah, in. that's weird. So it yeah, jumped over box. like uh, the actual username and edit box and all that kind of stuff. We're going to have to start pressing Y on some pages and seeing what happens. Yeah, I mean, the other way, again, you could do Check it is, um, you know, I would do H for heading. Welcome to GameStop heading level one. And then start down arrowing. Heading level two, sign into your GameStop account. Okay. Email. Required edit. And there you go. So don't feel like you always have to know, oh, it's an edit box, it's just checkbox. Mm -hmm. The one thing I want you to really take away that that, that all, all screen reader users should really get good at is, is for me, the H key is almost like your first line of, of attack. Mm -hmm. Whenever you land on a new page, tap your H and move by heading and see if you can hear a heading that is like, yes, this is what I was, that I'm looking for. Yes. Um, because again, you know, a good chunk of that top of every web page is repetitive, and you're gonna to have to just down arrow through a bunch of junk you don't care about. Well, mm -hmm. while the H key is gonna allow you to jump over all that and really get to kind of the meat and potatoes of the of the web page. So in conclu in conclusion, navigating the internet with a screen reader is really easy. You just gotta <laughs> you just gotta press H. Yeah. Is that yes. fair? Sure. <laughs> I mean, if, if all you want to do is move around by heading and never do anything else, that'll work. But, um, but it, it comes to confidence, uh, too. I mean, yes. the more you do it, the more it's comfortable not just you that, get. But what I get the impression of is that it's also experience. A lot of it is yeah, experience. Sure. Like, if you start to understand how web pages are generally designed, like most websites are designed with the same principles. Mm -hmm. And so once you start to understand the design and the terminology, then you can apply that to all sorts of different websites. I always am building a mental map in my head. When I'm browsing the internet, I see the web page in my head. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not the actual web page because yeah. when I've pictured, I don't picture things left and right of each other mm -hmm. 
with a screen reader, everything is up and down. Yeah. Is the thing I'm on right now, it, the, if I'm looking for something new, is it above or below where I am? Mm. And so I'm constantly building that and, and, and adding to that picture that's in my head so that I can quickly go, oh, okay, inbox when I'm on Gmail, I know that's at, towards the top of the page, that's above where I am or whatever it might be. Yes. You know, Just constantly building that uh, image in your head is gonna allow you to continue to, to move around more confidently and, uh, and have a better idea, like you said, of you know, kind of how that, how that page is laid out. Indeed, and with those wise words, it's time for us to bid you a sad farewell. Uh, or a happy farewell. Well, happy farewell. I mean, <laughs> although you could have dropped off the Zoom at any point. It's like nobody was forcing you to <laughs> say, oh, thank God, they're maybe done some, already. Maybe Jeez. some people don't know how to leave the Zoom, so oh, they're just stuck until we, until until we, we yeah. <laughs> How many people, I actually, really quickly, I yes. love in the chat, how many people stay to the very end of our Zoom? Because I always like to do... Uh, something specific at the end of every Zoom. Uh, when, we, when Corey's saying the end, he's talking about listening to the outro music. Yeah, and all the way to the end of the outro until you get kicked off of Zoom. If anybody knows what Corey does right at the end, <laughs> uh, then yeah. please put it in the chat. Um, and if you don't, maybe you could stick it around and listen to the music and see what happens today. Uh, it's, a, it's a big build up. <laughs> it really is. Um, so, yes, we have a YouTube channel. That would be uh, youtube.com forward slash vision forward in the focus no no forward slash vision forward tech connect yes. correct uh that would be youtube.com forward slash vision forward tech connect this video will of course be up there yep. along with all of our other videos including the latest youtube hit vision loss colon from grief to growth that's all perspectives on vision loss from someone um from someone. yeah check out the perspectives yes. of vision loss from that someone one, who's yes. visually impaired it's yes. a new video that we did uh luke interviews me i talk about my journey of kind of through the grieving process. I thought I, I liked it very much. Yeah, me too. A little different video for us. Yep. Uh, it's, it's, it's it's blowing up the YouTube charts. Hey, Some people yeah. might have heard of the Mr. Beast cataract video. Ours, yes. way, I mean, he, he basically called us and he's like, your video was so good, what should I do? He had a measly 65 million views on his the last like time I looked. like 80-something or something. <laughs> <right now>. <laughs> 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 yeah, the rookie numbers, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, do make sure to check out that video and share with other people if they're going through uh, the vision loss experience. Yeah. Maybe it will have some gems in there um, for them and, and help them realize that they are not alone. And do make sure to join us in two weeks' time when we, as I said, will have Anat Nullman back on. And Anat will be talking to us again about the real Sam Pocket. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing some of the more advanced functions of that device. So all very exciting stuff. Same time, 11 a.m. Central. Same place, wherever you are currently watching this one. <laughs> and um, same uh, bat channel, I guess. Uh, same, yeah. 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 There you go. Uh, same presenters, sadly. But yeah. uh, yes, we will very much look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time. Until then, have a great couple of weeks and goodbye for now. Thanks for joining us for another Tech Connect Live. If you enjoyed Corey and Luke's antics, be sure to join us next time. For all things Tech Connect, go to vision-forward.org slash techconnect.